Ethernet. Heard of it before? Maybe you've seen one of these weird cables in your closet or hidden behind some other piece of furniture. They do look a little bit weird, just sort of chilling there and never really being out in the open. When it comes to modern technology, we don't really use cables much nowadays, or at least not as much as we used to. You probably know a lot about stuff like Wi-Fi, but what about ethernet? What is ethernet? Where did it come from? And how does this over 50 year old system still power the world to this day? Hey guys, Future Frame here, and be sure to subscribe for more tech related content. I post weekly analysis videos on tech that you use in your everyday life. Without further ado, let's get right into the video. First, where did Ethernet come from? Stuff this important doesn't just appear out of nowhere. Well, this is why it's important to understand the historical context of back in those days. Before Ethernet, computers were mostly big, clunky, isolated machines. I mean, just take a look at some of these. Computers were just kind of thought about differently back then. If you wanted to share files, you often had to physically transfer disks from one machine to another. Networks did exist back then, but they were really expensive, clunky, and often proprietary. But this all changed in 1973. The original idea of Ethernet was created by a man named Robert Metcalf, a worker at Xerox Park, which was a division of the company Xerox. He saw the need for something better, like a faster, more reliable, and more simple way for multiple computers to communicate with each other, rather than slowly with one disk at a time. Inspired by an experimental wireless system from Hawaii called AlohaNet, Metcalf and his team created Ethernet, which was only experimental back then. AlohaNet was an experimental technology that did about what Ethernet does today but it used radio waves, which did mean that it was wireless. Instead of using radio waves though, Ethernet used coaxial cables, making it wired fast and surprisingly clean to use. But wait a second, wires? So we went from wireless to wires. Aren't we taking a step back? Well, you would be right if we were talking about today, but this was debatable back in the 1970s. AlohaNet was really, really slow. It transported data at around 9.6 kilobits per second, compared to Ethernet's speed of 2.94 megabits per second, making it hundreds of times faster than AlohaNet. Plus, radio waves were much less reliable back then, and you could easily lose your signal. Also, remember, this was 52 years ago. Most people preferred the simplicity of wires, and it was more easy to them, more of a second nature. So even though wireless did come back later, when we got stuff like Wi-Fi and other cellular technology, back then it was more of a downside. Technology kept evolving and Ethernet kept improving version to version. It started offering better speeds, better quality, and each time becoming less experimental and more of a real technology used in everyday life. In the 1980s, Ethernet had become a standard and it was showing up in many offices. Later, Metcalf and Xerox partnered up with Intel, which you may know of, they're a pretty big company, and they were also pretty big back in the 80s, to publish what's called the DIX standard, which was a new version of Ethernet that eventually evolved into the powerhouse we know today. So why was Ethernet so successful? What set it apart? Well, it did something nothing else did for its time. Ethernet was like a language that devices use to talk over a wired connection. It takes data from one device, wraps it into a packet, puts an address on it, and sends it through a wire to its destination, like sending a digital letter. It may seem simple, but that's what made it revolutionary at its time. It made computers send things from one to another faster than anyone could ever imagine. Remember, people were using floppy disks to do this stuff. The internet itself was invented in 1983, which is a whole other can of worms, enough that it probably needs its own video, but it made enough of a splash in the tech world to mention it here, and Ethernet complemented it perfectly. Without Ethernet, the internet might not be the same as it is today. Every server farm, every data center, every ISP, they all use Ethernet behind the scenes. 
It's almost like plumbing in a skyscraper. You don't really see it, but it's what makes everything flow. It's also pretty amazing to look back on the evolution of Ethernet. Looking back, it went from 2.4 megabits per second to 10 megabits per second, then to 100, then to 1 gigabit per second, and then even faster, from 10 to 40, and even nowadays, up to 400 gigabits per second for modern enterprise networks. The wires themselves have also changed over time. It moved from coaxial wires to twisted pair cables, like the common RJ45 cables we use now, and eventually to fiber optics. It's really cool to see how far it's come over all these years. But then, why is Ethernet still used today? It was revolutionary back then, and the whole cable thing really worked, but why now? Why hasn't it changed to wireless? Well, the reason is pretty simple. Wireless will, I think, pretty confidently never beat wires in terms of raw speed, stability, and low latency. This is why Ethernet still exists, and why it'll likely always exist. So the next time you plug in that cable, or see one collecting dusk behind a desk, just remember, that's the wire that changed it all. And without it, the internet wouldn't be the same. Hey, you made it all the way to the end. Thank you so much for watching this video. This is only the third video on this channel, but it's already gotten even more attention than I initially thought. I was expecting all of my videos to maybe get like 50 views or something. Last video getting a thousand views is actually amazing. And thank you guys so much for your support. I'll see you guys all in the next one. Peace.